Um, this this is is um, uh, scattered, shall we say, through through all of Egyptian uh, uh, society. I, I think what we we're just talking about there was maybe the uh, the most elaborate version, and and um, um, as as you know, also an, an, another name for the book of of, of the dead is a, the book of coming forth by day, and and it's a choice of how you interpret it. I'm I'm not fluent in hieroglyphics, but I I prefer to think of it as the book of coming forth by day. Uh, because I really believe that that it, it, it is a book that is as, as telling us uh, how we have to live our life. And I think that the simpler version of that for the everyday man, and, and essentially is, is the oldest story, because I think it was older than the pyramid text, et cetera, et cetera, is the story of Alsar, Alset, and, and, and Heru. And, and you know, um, that, that whole, you know, story of Alsar being the prototypical um, um, ancestor of Africa, of, of Kemet, Africa, um, and, and uh, civilizing, uh, you know, his people, and then going around the world, um, spreading civilization. And civilization meant mean, meaning giving them government, um, uh, agriculture, and farming, and 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 um, um, as, as well as animal husbandry, and and um, creating uh, wine, etc. You know, all of these sort of goodies of of life of, of that particular time. And then he went around the world and, and taught everybody else the civilization. In the meantime, his brother, uh, Seth, who was very envious of him, was plotting to, to, to take over the kingdom. But he had left um, Isis in charge, or Alset. I prefer, prefer to say Alsa or Alset and Heru. Um, yeah, so, so she was left in charge and she managed the kingdom pretty well. But when he came back, as you know, the story goes that, um, that, that, that Seth had prepared a sarcophagus, a beautiful sarcophagus. Um, and, and they had a party and, and everybody um, 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 tried to fit into the sarcophagus because whoever fit it was going to get it. It was a great gift, you know, that, that would be buried in it. And of course, he had taken the measurements of, of Osar before and so on and so forth. So when he enticed Osar to, to get into the sarcophagus, um, him and 72, I'm not sure the meaning of the 72, and the 72 buddies who, who had been scheming, they closed the lid down, hammered it shut, and I think they even poured melted lead or something like that, and um, so and then threw him into the Nile. And so so he was suffocated, um, as well as drowned, you know. And and there's that whole thing now uh, of interpreting. Uh, anyway, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but um, uh, both 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 Elset and um, and um, Netflix, who was Seth's a wife, um, uh, and but also a sister to, to also say so it's a family. In other words, it's your psyche. That this is what the whole story means. It, it's it's the first uh, 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 story of of uh, uh, understanding of the mind and 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 what you have to do in terms of of self knowledge, and and to be able to um, um, uh, shall we say gain mastery over over your mind and therefore live righteously according to 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 my art. So. Anyway, you know, she 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 found the the the, 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 the sarcophagus. Um, uh, again, I, I I won't go into details there. Brought his body back, but then Seth found it, and uh, at night when he was hunting in the moon, and maybe you know some of the symbolism, cut it into fourteen pieces, and I think that has to do with the moon and the waxing and the waning of the moon, whatever. And what she and and, and Nepsis now went around the kingdom. Um, finding all the pieces, and they found 13 pieces. They couldn't find a 14th, and um, the, the 14th piece had been thrown into the Nile and eaten by a particular fish, and, and that particular fish was not eaten by any Egyptian ever after. Uh, I don't remember the name of the name the name of, of, of the fish, but I think what that that uh, symbolizes is that um, they were able to 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 re recollect, meaning re remember. Uh, meaning that they, they, they put all of his pieces together, they remembered everything about Alsa, put it together, uh, but not in a sexual way. It, it was not a sexual relationship either with Alsa or or with um, uh, Nephthys, but both had offsprings. And of course, um, so this was the divine conception. I think again, this is the first story of that divine conception. I think probably in the history of the world. I don't know. Um, uh, but Alsa gave birth to Heru. And and uh, Nephthys um, gave, gave birth to, to a jackal, which is very interesting because the jackal is symbolic of transformation. 
Um, and you may want to go into that because I think that's also very heavy in terms of the symbolism of the whole story. And then, of course, she she well, nurtured uh, a Horus in, in the swamps, et cetera, et cetera, and grew him up. And, and um, again, what that means is, 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 is that uh, as part of, of the psyche, we, we, which is the part of our consciousness that deals with things, um, um, she, she is now um, developing that in, 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 in terms of its, its ability to be strong, meaning that you can have focused attention. And this is the intentionality of, of the, the hero, Heru, because again, that's what uh, Heru uh, means. And he's going to go up and fight the villain. So he has to be strong. He has to have concentration. So that's what all of that is, is about. And then now he goes to battle with Set. And it goes on for a long time. But the gods are <laughs> tired of the whole business. And of course, we know gods are not gods. They're principles of divine principles of nature and functionalities. And, and um, again, we were going to all, all, all the gods that, that were there. But they, they, they gave the kingdom eventually um, to Heru. Now, once Heru gained the kingdom, uh, again, because of his understanding uh, of himself, because of his ability to defeat Seth, which are all the negative things that we do as human beings. And um, so he now gained mastery of the kingdom, and the kingdom is your kingdom, your life. And then he goes to the underworld, which is the inner world. You see, and I think this is something uh, I interpret it that way. The underworld is the inner world. He goes to the inner world, and he resurrects. Osar, his daddy, which is his, the part of him that was buried. It, it was, was buried um, when, when the coffin was shut. It was buried when he was drowned, you know. But now um, um, Heru goes to the inner world, the underworld, and raises his, his, his dad um, uh, up to life. That means now he's resurrecting really that part of himself that had been, been, been cut off um, because he was, a, a, um, a you know, uh, a young man doing whatever things that he was doing. So, so that is the first um, um, psychology, you know, in, in terms of, uh, of self-knowledge. And um, I think that's not recognized, you know, and we hear about Freud starting this and Jung starting that and all these other psychological things, and they haven't even got there. They, they haven't even got, gotten to this um, be, be, because they, they don't understand that, 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 that mind is, is not something real. It, it, it's just consciousness that has been conditioned. And, and Seth is the conditioned consciousness that you have to defeat and transform it. And then, of course, Seth was not killed, but Seth was used to, 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 to carry Osar uh, around the kingdom for millions of years. And of course, that means that the energy, et cetera, et cetera, had been transformed into, shall we say, righteous energy, uh, living the life of Matt and so on. And this is something, and I want just to get into this, this is why. I say that, you know, uh, uh, spirituality is different from religion, because this now is a very personal approach to how you uh, develop your self-understanding, develop your self-awareness, your self-knowledge, transform yourself, you know, because nobody else can do it for you, the priest can't do it for you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, and, and much of the priesthood and much of the ritual um, is, is somewhat external to your own inner transformation that you have to do. And I know that you, 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 you know, you, you have some differences there, um, but, but I think it's, it's not really, well, I'll let you do your thing in terms of how you see spirituality different from religion, perhaps also comment on that story in terms of any other insights that you have uh, relative to its, its meaning. Greetings. My name is Robin Walker. I'm also known as the Black History Man. I am perhaps best known for my 2006 book, When We Ruled. Based on this book, I'm launching a new online history course aimed at you, the adults. You could be a parent, you could be a teacher, a mechanic, cleaner, professionals, care workers, security guards, taxi drivers, kitchen workers, entrepreneurs, tech heads, lawyers, all of you. We want people from all over the world to be empowered by our content. We want you to gain mastery over your history and heritage. And you can do this by subscribing to our course. Click on the link to get this powerful, life-changing material. Um, the 
interpretation that you've given the Egyptian story of Horus, Set, Isis, and so on, um, a lot more black scholarship needs to have this kind of discussion and have the discussion on what exactly do the symbols mean. The interpretation that you've given is a very, very powerful interpretation, is a very, very useful interpretation. But the main problem that we have is that the ancient Egyptian story of, of Isis and, and um, Set, Osiris, that kind of thing, most of what we have isn't what the ancient Egyptians said, it's what the ancient Europeans said about what the ancient Egyptians said. A lot of it is coming from a, a source, uh, a scholar called Plutarch, who wrote a book called On Isis and Osiris. And what you've said, that's where that's coming from. Now you can map it against, okay, this is what we see on the Egyptian temple walls, and we can map this against that. But it does mean that the spiritual meanings of the different symbolism in the story, black scholars need to have a much, much deeper discussion. And your interpretation is a very, very powerful one. And the, the meaning behind the symbols is a very, very powerful one. And what I would do is invite other scholars to have that discussion, this particular part of the story, what symbol, what meaning, or what interpretations we can put on it. Because what you've come with is powerful. All right, let me point out a few uh, observations of my own. You've mm -hmm. got the idea of, um, uh, according to Plato, you've got Isis fearing for the life of her child, Osiris. Isis being uh, making a box from papyrus and reed and hiding the child in the um uh the, the river Nile where it floats down the, and then ends up in uh Byblos. Byblos is in the Middle East. And then you've got um Lebanon. Isis. Hmm? I think it's Lebanon. Yeah. And yeah. then what you then get is Isis finding the box and so on. Yeah. And a lot of people have looked at that story and, and isn't that the um Moses story floating down? the river Nile. And then not to be outdone, one of the Middle Eastern civilizations called the Akkadians. Let me read what an Akkadian source says. My city is Azupiranu, which lieth on the bank of the Euphrates. My poor mother conceived me. In secret, she brought me forth. She set me in a bat basket of rushes, rushes. With bitumen, she closed my door. She cast me into the river. The river bore me up unto Aki, the irrigator, and the goddess Ishtar came to protect me. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the Middle Eastern kings, the king of Sargon, of, of Akkad, and apparently he was floating down the river Euphrates. And then that became their version of the story until the goddess Ishtar came to rescue this child mm -hmm was in this uh, basket floating down the Euphrates. And you can see where later religions are coming from. But the key point, what do the symbols mean? And in my opinion, what you have, put it down on paper, seriously. Get a debate and a dis discourse around it because the, the, the psychological symbolisms of what each symbol means, yeah, we need to have a discussion about that. Yeah. Yeah. As a thank you for visiting our website, we are giving you a free copy of our exclusive 100 Black History Facts, which is in fact a taster of our course content. Make sure you leave your email address and we will send it right to you. We hope it inspires you to dig deeper into your history and heritage. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, 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 it's fundamental because... Um... Uh, you know, th this is my in interpretation. Um, part of it is intuitive, and and part of it is you know scholarship on, on my part in terms of trying to understand what different people have said, and and seeing what what is the basis of 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 their saying so. And um, Charlotte de Lubis is, is somebody that um, I respect um, a, a fair amount in terms of his understanding of of Egypt. And I'm sure you you know his work. He spent like 17 years or something in the different temples in Luxor and, and, and different places going through 
all kinds of stuff. And, you know, my, my, my only negative with him is that he thought the Egyptians came from somewhere else. They weren't black people. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. And it's I, amazing that someone can do 17 years and come to that conclusion. I mean, I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. Uh, 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 you know, and his whole family, Lucy Lamy, who was his stepdaughter and so on and so forth. I mean, to me, they, they have a beautiful understanding of what the symbolism means. He calls it symbolique and so on and so forth. Um, um, and, 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 and this is what is important, you, you see, because as you know, um, shall we say, you know, certain areas of human experience um, which, which are beyond words and beyond concepts, they're, they're, therefore, they can't be described. Um, and, you know, a, a full understanding of yourself in the spiritual sense. Um, you know, okay, different people have tried to describe it, but, uh, you know, you can't. It, it, it's just um, uh, uh, undescribable. So the only way you can convey it is through symbol and allegory. And, and that's what the, the ancient Egyptians did. And that's why they never wanted to let go of their hieroglyphics. Because that was their sacred writing. I mean, they had the, the uh, what's the other, what, Merotic and, and so on, um, you know, but they never let go of their hieroglyphic, which was the sacred language, which is a language that dealt really with the invisible and, and the, the undescribable. And, and um, so how, how they used um, that in terms of um, trying to, to interpret and understand is that they saw functional principles in the different animals and the different plants. In their existence, like for example, they would use the crocodile to represent, shall we say, um, strength and, and you know destruction. And they would use the hippopotamus to represent, you know, a pregnant mother, you know, giving birth. I mean, what can be more, you know, like a pregnant mother than a big hippo? Um, I mean, I hope the ladies uh, forgive me for, for that one. Um, you know, and, and uh, as I mentioned, the, the jackal. Um, you know, a, a, a jackal is, 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 is like, a, you know, one of those fierce dogs or what have you, and eats the rotten meat and so on, but transforms it into nourishment for himself. So that's that whole transformation process that, you know, you can imbibe something or you can be uh, something, but you can transform yourself into something that's better. So, um, you know, the, the, the symbolism is just wonderful. And, and it's an indication of the understanding of the basic principles of life. And, and this, is not what, this is not what the West has come to. They do not attempt to understand principles in terms of, of source and, and origin. All they are interested in, well, how does it function at the present time? What are the different parts? How do they work together? You see, and then they replace this part with that part. And OK, I can make it more efficient, or I can do this, or I can do that. And you know, uh, it ends up that, uh, that it, what, what may be considered an improvement over time May, may, may be destructive of a particular ecosystem of which that thing is a part, you know, and we have that in our agriculture now we, with all of the fungicides and the herbicides and, 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 and the, the, um, the, all the other stuff that they that, that put in the earth to, to, to give a bigger yield, the fertilizers, et cetera, et cetera. And then you wear out the, the, the earth in, in a particular short period of time because you're not replenishing it with compost and so on and so forth. So, um, uh, these are things that I think are important for us to understand, um, and, and I think, you know, it was laid out for us then. Hey.